What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome to my builds guide and unit review of the Summer Longing banner which features Duo Shamir, Summer Female Chess, Summer Ephraim and also Summer Laura Shell. So Duo Shamir is definitely going to be the star of this banner being a uh, Blue Bow Cavalier and she's going to be functioning as a really good nuke because of her weapon, Partnership Bow. So this gives her minus a special cooldown. At start of turn, she can inflict panic and discord status to the nearest foes within 5 spaces and then splash that status to the foes that are within 2 spaces of those foes. So panic status is something that we have seen quite a lot and discord status is actually a new status effect which Duo Shamir brings. So all it does is that it pretty much gives you minus X in combat to all of your stats and this X is calculated by 2 plus the number of allies within 2 spaces and this can go up to max 5. So basically it kind of punishes you for being near your allies and gets the in combat debuff on you for that. And then she's able to get plus 5 to all of her stats and also gets minus X speed and defense debuff on the foe. And here the X is going to be the number of visible status, be it positive or negative present on the foe multiplied by 4. And this can go all the way up to 16 speed and defense debuff in the combat. So that is a really, really massive stat swing for outspeeding a lot of fast units. And that is going to be making her as a pretty good unit to face many of the god swords, which are going to be very fast, especially someone like Lucia, who doesn't really have as much speed as a uh, Leer or like a Syndet Fur. So having this kind of stat swing is really helpful. And then if the foe has got any kind of bonus or penalty active on them, then she can get the Null Guard effect and also get the half version of Null Follow Up, which allows her to bypass any kind of follow up negation effects. So this weapon is definitely really stacked. Having the Null Guard effect or the Half Tempo effect is really good so that she can trigger Deadeye and also punishes a lot of the Omni Tanks and God Swords in general which try and stack up a lot of visible status like Resonant Shields, Resonant Blades, Grand Strategy, Bonus Doubler, all of those things. So she's going to be punishing those kinds of Omni Tanks and especially God Swords because of having Weapon Strangle advantage against them. She also has high speed to go along with this kind of weapon which causes massive stat swing for her speed. So she's got base 46 speed and also base 43 attack which does have a super boon and she comes with remote sparrow and also brash assault 4. So remote sparrow does give you 30% damage reduction and then brash assault gives you even more damage reduction so you can basically get like 50% damage reduction with both of these skills so it does make their survivability a bit better in the player phase and brash assault 4 is a new tier 4 skill that we have got so brash assault 4 only works in the player phase if the unit's hp is not at full or the foe's hp is at full so she can inflict minus 4 defense and resistance debuff on the foe and also gets 30% damage reduction from foe's first attack and unit can also make a guaranteed follow up attack so this definitely makes it uh, really useful for many of the slower units and then finally unit's next attack deals damage equal to the total damage reduced so this is the damage reflection that we have seen. Now I do think that there's much to be desired out of the description of Brash Assault 4, especially the English description because um, it doesn't really stack up like you would expect it to stack with the damage reduction, uh, for example like it does with e -tree. So while the damage reduction itself stacks up, the damage reflection is not going to be stacking up. Like if you run Spurn on Hans, then the total damage reduced it's going to be stacking up and it is going to be reflected in the damage reflection. But here you're only going to be able to reflect the damage that it reduced from the damage reduction from Brash Assault 4. So that is something that is to be kept in mind so that you don't really give the skill to someone like Yune for example. Uh, just because you think that she can get a lot of damage reduction and that's why she's going to be getting a lot of damage reflection. Which doesn't seem to be the case. And this actually works with Hans's weapon but of course there's a lot of nuance to it how it does. And even if Brash Assault 4 gets its damage reduction completely pierced by something like Deadeye, it is still going to be giving you the damage reflection so it can help you do even more damage. So again, like I said, a lot more things are going on with Brash Assault 4. So that is going to be a new skill which is going to be really helpful for many of the slower units in the player phase because this skill only works in the player phase and does give you the guaranteed follow-up attack which can help many of these slower units and can also help you get the damage reflection. Duo Shamir can also use her duo skill to inflict gravity status on the foes in the cardinal direction and inflict the feud status on the foes within 5 rows or 5 columns centered on Shamir. 
So that can all add up for the status effects for her weapon and basically give her minus 16 speed and defense debuff on the foe in the combat because of all of the status effects that she can get out of her duo skill and her weapon itself. So this is going to be useful in summoner duels where the use of the duo skill is very very useful and it is used quite a lot. If you're going to be running Shamir on a budget then you can simply give her blade session and reposition and she's going to be working out fine with her base kit but Brash Assault 4 can definitely be ditched because she already is pretty fast so she doesn't really need the guaranteed follow up attack especially with the half null follow up that she has got and you can actually make use of the half null follow up productively by running wind sweep inner slot b so that is also going to be an option that you can run on Shamir and of course near trace is also going to be an option that you can run so that you can get the counter utility so Brash Assault 4 is a good skill but don't be forced to keep it if you do have the other options available. Like I said, Duo Shamir is going to be a pretty good unit for facing God Swords and Omni Tanks and a place where you face a lot of them are going to be in Aether Raids. So she is an Aether Raids defense unit and if you're trying to optimize her then you can definitely run Loud Speed Defense 4 so that you can just double down on punishing the foes for their status effects and also nullify any kind of speed buff that they've got going. So this is going to be the optimal skill for Shamir in my opinion. Uh, that you can run for Aether Raid's defense usage and because she is a dual unit she does score like a 200 BST unit and if you do run 300 SP passives then on max investment she can score like a 205 BST unit so that is also something that you can do if you're going to be investing heavily heavily into her and getting her at plus 10 merge. Summer Female Chez is a Sword Cavalier with Surfer Spire as her preferred weapon which is a Levin Might dual phase brave weapon so it can provide her with plus 5 speed and also deal 2 damage based on 20% of her speed excluding the AoE specials and it also has the near trace skill built in so she doesn't really have to run near trace in her slot B and can just run lot speed defense um, you know a lot freely and there's not much of an opportunity cost. She can even run a flow skill because she doesn't really have partial null follow up built in her weapon so all of those options are going to be possible on female Chez and she does have amazing attack at base 46 and also base 45 speed which makes her an offensive threat especially when you consider her slot a skill swift slice which we did see before on uh, legendary Chez. So she can basically get plus 8 to all of her stats with this and also get the effective damage against non-infantry units really easily and against infantry units she needs to have a lot more speed as long as they're not dragon or these units so yeah with the effective damage she's gonna be hitting extremely hard against many of these slower opponents and just killing them in like two hits with this kind of weapon which is dual phase brave weapon she also has attack defense menace in her base kit and also loud speed defense 4 so loud speed defense 4 is the tier 4 version of the loud skill that we've got and it basically punishes the status effects on the opponents so it can debuff foe's speed and defense depending on 4 plus the number of bonus status effects present on the foe and this can go all the way up to max 8 debuffs so it's a pretty good skill and definitely functional enough so that you can run this on something like Aether Raid's defense and like I showcased before on uh, Duo Shamir this could be a really good skill and Summer Female Chess also makes amazing use of the skill because she doesn't really have to run near trace in her slot B. So overall she's going to be functioning as a top tier melee nuke with this kind of weapon and also having her legendary version Swiss Slice in her slot A. If you want to run her on a budget then you can simply give her blade session and reposition and you don't really have to do too much but you can obviously try and change her build quite a bit by running speed defense menace so that she has an easier time meeting the speed check of Swiss Slice and you can also run flow 4 so that you can also get the partial all follow up and get the debuff neutralization to your attack and speed which are her most important stats as an offensive unit. So flow skill and speed defense menace are going to be nice and you can actually get speed defense menace from the divine code. So it's going to be an upgrade and definitely something that you can run on female Chez. And you can also run her in summoner duels and she's going to be a really top tier nuke in summoner duels for just going in and taking care of many of the front liners. And there you need to run something like Pulse Smoke so that you can decharge the pre-charge specials of many of the foes. So Pulse Smoke is always useful in summoner duels. Summer Ephraim is an Axe Cavalier with C-Form Splitter as his preferred weapon. This gives him minus some special cooldown and as sort of combat if the number of adjacent allies to him is 2 or less than 2 then he can get plus 1 movement which is an amazing thing for any kind of cavalier if you've seen Brave Selif or Legendary Seagard. At sort of combat if his HP is at or above 25% then he can inflict minus 6 attack and defense debuff on the foe in the combat and he also gets special charge plus 1 on both his attacks and the enemy's attacks and finally he also gets 40% damage reduction on foe's first attack. 
Now, Summer Ephraim is not just there with his preferred weapon, he also comes with a preferred sloppy skill in Sunlight Bangle. So again, if the number of allies adjacent to him is one or less, then he can get the following effects. He can get the defense debuff and the attack debuff on the opponent in the combat depending on the clash condition. So at the max 4 movement, he's going to be able to debuff them for minus 8 to both of their stats, which is really quite a lot. And then he also has a dual phase brave effect, which is going to be making him a solid nuke. And he also heals up 7 HP whenever he attacks in the combat. And finally, he has a forced foe's first attack condition in his weapon so basically it forces the opponent to attack first even when he's going to be initiating in the player phase and the idea is basically the fact that you want to force the enemy to make the first attack so that he can charge up your bonfire and just kill them so that is the idea behind the reverse vantage effect that we see on Ephraim with the sunlight bangle now he definitely has the defense for surviving many of the physical attacks but if he's going to be facing any kind of damage reduction piercing uh you know weapon or any kind of unit like that then they're going to be able to probably kill him so it can actually come to bite him back against like the wrong kinds of opponents so you definitely have to watch out for that as part of his uh, you know functioning but still most of the time this kind of force attack from the enemy is actually going to be helping you charge up bonfire and do a lot of damage and just kill them with this kind of dual phase brave effect his base kit also has attack defense clash 4 which is perfect when he gets the extra movement from his weapon and he also has alarm attack defense which can give him the canto because he can only run a near trace skill with his preferred skill in the slot b so alarm attack defense is pretty much going to be the best slotty skill that he can run on him and he has got an insanely high base attack of 47 with the super boon and also very high defense at base 44 with pretty good base resistance at base 31. His speed is really low so if he fails to kill an opponent then he's pretty much going to be dying because he's so slow that he's going to be getting doubled by everything under the sun and that's why triggering bonfire or ignis and triggering that before the foe can double and kill you is definitely helpful on Ephraim with his dual phase brave effect. For building up Ephraim, you don't really need to do too much because his base kit is already pretty good so you just need to give him attack defense catch or attack defense solo sacred seal and he's gonna be doing fine and he can even run gale force actually because of the special charges that he can get um, but still you heavily have to depend on the dual phase brave effect to pretty much kill the opponent and so that he can trigger the gale force but still this is gonna be an option and you can even run ignis actually so that you can trigger that special on your brave attack and pretty much kill the opponent but it is going to be an overkill many times and I do feel like bonfire is a bit better especially when you face opponents with the guard effect. You can also run distant ferocity or distant storm on him. I do like distant storm a bit more because it actually gives you the extra attack in the player phase as well as in the enemy phase. So because of the attack shredding and the damage reduction that he has got he can definitely take on some of the ranged threats and retaliate back to them with distant storm. And the chip damage is going to be annoying but keep in mind that Ephraim is able to heal up the HP from his sunlight bangle so it's not the worst thing ever. I know many people really do not like the foe's first attack condition on his sunlight bangle and basically the reverse vantage so you can actually disable that vantage and function like a normal unit and if you initiate attack then you're going to be attacking first if you run hardy bearing because it cancels out his uh, effect from sunlight bangle so he's going to be able to use his brave effect and still trigger bonfire on his brave attack and kill many of the opponents but still there is going to be an opportunity cost as you're not going to be able to run attack defense solo or attack defense catch so you miss out on some stats that you could have had if you had run those sacred seal but still if you really hate that reverse vantage effect then hardy bearing sacred seal is going to be your friend Summer Lorachelle is a flying healer with Seaside Parasol Plus as the best inhibitable staff that she brings to the game because previously we did have Palm Staff but this is even better than Palm Staff because of having the extra stuff built in it. So at sort of turn she can inflict the guard status on the nearest foes within 5 spaces of her and then it extends its reach to 2 more spaces if there are foes within those foes that have any kind of safe skill. So it's really helpful for splashing the enemy with the guard effect and can be helpful in Rooker Siege. And then at sort of combat, if her HP is at or above 25%, then she's able to get plus 5 speed and attack in the combat and also inflicts minus X resistance on foe in the combat. Now this depends on the number of total status present on the enemy multiplied by 4 and this can go all the way up to 16. So this is kind of similar to what we see on Duo Shamir's weapon except here it is present for only the resistance so you can actually debuff the resistance of the opponent by quite a lot which is uh, definitely insane for having more damage output for many of these healers. And that's why I think that this is pretty much the best offensive staff that we have in the game right now. 
So not only you support your allies with the guard effect, but also you can get extra offenses and also get the extra resistance debuff on the enemy with this kind of effect. Summer Lara Shell also has a top tier offensive spread with 46 base attack with the super boon and 44 base speed so those offenses are really really good and whenever we get an arcane staff she's gonna be a top tier um, staff healer basically who is also a flying healer so she's got access to some of the flying skills like guidance 4 which are absolutely top tier. Summer Laura Shell also comes with Blade Session 3 at 5 stars so maybe we're gonna be getting like a tier 4 version of the skill hopefully in future. And she also has Wrathful Staff 3 at 4 star which is gonna be helpful for a lot of the healers. And we didn't really have Earth, Wind, Bomb Plus before so she also comes with that. So if you're gonna be building her up on a budget then you can definitely just refine her weapon for the Dazzling Staff effect and just give her some kind of slotty skill because it's pretty flexible. But if you do have access to Speed Resistance Rain then that's something you can run from the Plagian Tharja Combat Manual that we had. And Attack Speed Catch can be obtained from the Divine Codes along with Return Plus. So both of those skills are going to be pretty good that you can run on this kind of Flora shell. But if you're going to be foddering some premium units to her then uh, Fallen Maria is definitely one of them which you can do because she can give Poetic Justice, Holy Panic and Attack Speed Unity at the same time. And then you can run an Oath 4 skill and have good synergy with the Unity skill and basically teleport all the way around. An even more invested build is actually going to be taking fodder from a rearmed unit like rearmed Tana in the form of Guidance 4 and then also using Ascended Elencia as fodder. So you can run Dazzling Shift so that you can teleport and then you can also enable the teleportation by running Guidance 4 and making good use out of that flying mobility and having access to Guidance 4 which in my opinion is going to be amazing skill that you can run to support your allies um, at this kind of max investment. And then of course you can also get Lights Restrained as the damaging special and also you can run Attack Speed Unity because it is going to be having good synergy with the teleportation that Dazzling Shift does enable. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment it helps you tremendously. And if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more free videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Summer Ephraim if he initiates against someone who can pierce through the damage reduction. So with that's all to you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.